So I would like to say a few words about uh, Krivirich to, uh, to just like explain why it's important for us to organize the convoy and support workers in this region. Krivirich is a city in um, east, central east part of uh, Ukraine, which is famous for uh, huge iron ore mines and the biggest metallurgic iron factory in the whole Ukraine. So as you can imagine, it's also like a very important goal for Russia to occupy, but the city still um, is free and, and quite safe, although the Russian army is like 70 kilometers from the city. So it's safe, but as you can imagine, again, they have to protect themselves uh, because they live uh, in a huge risk of uh, Russian attacks. And those who protect the city basically come from unions. Right now, people who join uh, territorial defense, so those self-organized military units, they come from unions. There's like few thousand union members who join uh, those uh, units to protect the city. Otherwise, it would be at even higher risk. Unions provide uh, the whole support uh, to those people, food, um, also like uh, pr protection vests, how you call it? Safety vest. Uh, they provide uh, medical aid. Whatever is needed on the front, it comes from unions. The state and the local authority don't provide any support for these people. Uh, also, weapon, we have to say that, it's provided by uh, people who live there, all by organizations that support workers. But most of uh, products that goes there, they are uh, products and items like tactical items to protect uh, their lives. So like our convoys, we, we of course don't buy guns and weapons, we just like buy uh, things that protect these people to stay alive. Um, and when I mention union, of course we are all from military organizations, from military movement, um, radical movement, and we know that there is different kinds of unions, also yellow unions and nationalist unions, but in Krivirich, we met people from independent unions. Uh, the name of the union is Independent Union of uh, Ukrainian Miners. So they try to organize unhierarchical grassroots structures, which organize very important, huge, wildcat industrial actions before the war started. Um, and what is also important, the uh, huge uh, amount of members of these unions is female. There, are, there is a lot of women who work in mines, especially now, because they cover those uh, workers, male workers who are on the front. And women also play very important role in this union. Those mines uh, in Krivirich, they basically, they were privatized and both by uh, Indian English business, so uh, for, for people, for miners there, but also factory workers, it's very important to build international collections. It's basically crucial because those companies, it's like one of them, it's called Axelor Metal, is very international. The management from Axelor Metal left cheat like those like bosses are in either in Poland or in England some of them are in Poland and they left workers uh, alone mm, especially uh, male workers who cannot leave Ukraine to basically deal with the problem themselves and this is what they are doing now what I learn like of course they are in very difficult situation um, but they try to use it to strengthen the, they, their power also in relation to, um, I would say, like uh, right-wing movement. They try to strengthen left-wing movement and uh, grassroots unions. So they provide uh, support for people on the front, but also like families of uh, people who are on the front. Um, and in this way, they show how important they are for the 
for the whole society. It's very, it's very important for them because right now, as you could hear uh, uh, from Vitali, like workers uh, lost almost all workers' rights. And it's very important for them, it's uh, very difficult for them to fight for uh, better working conditions, better pays, safe working condition, because like every struggle can be considered as like betrayer uh, or like uh, basically during martial law they cannot protest. So business and capital try to use it against them. They have, they, they are on two fronts. They have to fight with uh, imper Russian imperialism on the one front, but there's another front, capital, who basically uh, squeeze them even more and uh, worsen working condition and pay. That's why for us, uh, we consider it as our duty to support them. We don't consider them as only Ukrainian workers who are there and struggle. They are our brothers and sisters from working class who we have to support in such situation, as well as Italian workers who are also our brothers and sisters. It's our common struggle and we have to strengthen them to survive these uh, very difficult conditions. So they don't give up also for us, um, fighting not only with Russia but also with capital. But for, at the end I would like to explain one thing about territorial defense. Territorial defense by some people is considered as a, a far right uh, in, I would, like structure. But right now, there is quite a few uh, left-wing territorial defense units which still exist and take part in battles. But territorial defense, like we ask people, those union members who joined territorial defense, why they decided to do that. And they said that it gives them, when they are part of uh, these uh, uh, this, this units, it gives them kind of like a power and subjectivity. But at the same time, they, they are not like a state military organization, so they are also, also autonomous from the state. So instead of like being repressed by police, by army, they prefer to establish those units and be like kind of like on equal terms uh, with uh, proper like military uh, organizations. Mm, of course, we don't know how it will end. Um, but I think that we are not, we, we cannot judge people who joined such forces. But as I said, we have to consider them as like working class organizations, which we have to try to understand and give as much as support as we can.